and I may repeat myself a little bit here, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> Welcome to the Friday edition of the Tato Live Friday night special. The reason why this is special is it wasn't an event. It wasn't one that I had scheduled. It's one that uh, it just sort of came together because I'm at school at the moment and I'm sitting here uh, waiting to start writing my dissertation and working on my dissertation. Excuse me, and I haven't uh, I haven't started yet. And I thought before I start, I would run a quick Tato Live presentation. I before I started to record, one of the things that I was talking about is today was a day off for the students in our division and was a professional PD day for the teachers which was a really nice change not the fact that we're doing PD but it was a nice change that we got a chance to listen to Sir Ken Robinson and his views on education and where we need to go in order to be effective educators in the world in which we we live we currently live and I referred briefly to um, our STA president and his words that he spoke about and how powerful they were and it's one of the things that I'm hoping I will get a uh, video recording of his speech and I will post it for you. I think it will um, ring true for many teachers around the planet and will become a very popular video because of what he said at this conference. Um, Ken and I will post that one as well because I did record 57 minutes of his uh, of his talk and I will record that as well also on Tato vid Vids so that you'll get a chance to see his speech and what he talked about and I will just briefly uh, give you my impression of how I felt as I listened to him and um, he ha he is a, one of the most gifted speakers that I know of in the educational realm and he's the closest thing to an education rock star uh, because of the, his ability to string a story and how to, he can uh, make his point without making you feel like you're doing something wrong and how he can make you feel valued as an educator and yet challenge you in order to go out there and do be the best educator you possibly can and so I loved his uh, his method of speaking to you to a group of 3,000 teachers and how the teachers walked away feeling like it is possible for us to change this. It is possible for us to do what needs to be done in order to be successful in the world in which we are currently trying to educate students. One of the neatest things that I think he brings to the discussion always is the fact that the core curriculum is important but it's not as important as creativity and the arts in schools and I find that very refreshing because it seems like we tend to uh, forget those when we start talking about standardization standard standard testings and new assessment models new curriculum and all of those different things that we seem to be bombarded with in our daily life as an educator he seems to bring a refreshing view that if you are passionate and you have a an open enough curriculum and you allow students to follow their passion and to do what they're good at or what they're passionate about they will be successful he he did state a couple things that I found interesting one of the things he said there's many of us who do jobs or are doing things in our lives that we're very good at but we're not passionate about and we simply do them because we're good at them he then gave us a story about uh, an American gymnast who at 10 years of age was sort of walked around on his hands and um, his mom recognized this gift that his, their child had and rather than telling them to stand up on his feet and quit walking around on his hands she encouraged him and he went on to uh, win gold medals and to uh, be the best gymnast in the United States of America and in the world and he sort of explained it that, that the parent rather than stopping him from doing what he was good at and from and what he was passionate about and how he felt when she allowed him to go into the gym and how he felt like he was home and how he he was intoxicated by the environment in which the gym the gymnasium gave him as he walked in and I've heard him talk another time about a student who couldn't sit still and was always seemed to be a tapping to music and to a beat and how an educator discovered that the best thing for that student was to go into dance and how that student went on to become a, a famous person and he talked about it this is the first time I've ever heard him talk about himself and how he had polio when he was in his school and a person 
came by and thought that he wasn't being challenged enough in the school that he was in and requested that he had the opportunity to go into a mainstream high school or a, the normal high school and proceed from that point in time and became the man that was standing in front of us today with all his um, being an education rock star that he has become and how he got to that point and how one person at one certain point in time encouraged him or had had to put the interest into him in order for him to become who he is today and how we as educators don't know the impact that we have in people's lives simply because um, a lot of the stuff that we impact and a lot of the stuff that happens happens after the fact and isn't going to happen in the classroom and a little word here or a little challenge there as you're in your your classroom and teaching can become a huge impact in a child's life and push that child to do better or to do more than we could ever expect them to be able to do and so it was a very interesting conversation it was never boring not conversation excuse me presentation that sir ken did today it was never boring and it uh, i think challenged us as educators to do all that we can do now, I'll just briefly, uh, and this is going to be a very brief one because I don't want this to go too long tonight because I do have to get back to work, but um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the articles. There was uh, six articles that came to mind today as I was reading through my Twitter feeds. And a couple of them, the first one talks about understanding the online learning experience. I I read this as it's, a, it's really important for online learners to understand that it's not a face-to-face -face classroom. It's, you don't have to have the same skills. You have to have, excuse me, different skills than you would if you're in, in a face-to-face -face classroom. And so a couple of them that were brought up in this article is you have to be very good at time management. Um, your online course is going to be more work than you expect it to be. Um, you will miss being in a face-to-face -face classroom where you have the opportunity to ask a question and get a response immediately. You, um, you don't have the peer interaction, so you'll miss some of that. Um, you'll have that feeling of disconnection sometime unless you're very good at uh, social networking or or being able to network via the electronics. Um, you'll find that you don't have as much input from the instructor that you do in a face-to-face -face classroom and that may be replaced by um, interaction with the computer or with peers hopefully in order to make you feel like you belong and so it's an it's an interesting article and I'll post it on Tato so you can look at it there the next one is the LMS less blended course why and how um, what's that ref what that court what that article is referring to is how Google is one of the things that comes up in this conversation open office and some of the other tools that are out there that are not learning management tools but bring some tools that when you pull them together do, do allow you to teach a course online and um, how if you use them effectively you can teach, have a very good blended classroom by using the Google tools or some of the other tools that are out there here in the Saskatoon Catholic School Division we're going to try to use Moodle as a as an enhancement for our blended blended classroom we call them hybrid classes here and we're going to try to get, use those tools in order to effectively enhance the face-to-face -face classrooms the next article excuse me i, I keep burping here <coughs> excuse me okay online learning the ruin of education this is a this one the title basically got me um, what it talks about is whether or not online learning is the ruin of education. Um, I think it, you need to read it. I'm not going to talk to it. I think it's just, it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile read. Um, secondary heads have to walk on water. This is the BBC, so when they talk about the secondary head teachers, um, they're talking about the uh, the principals in the in the schools and it just talks about how they're expected to do so much with so little and how a lot of them are very challenged by that and don't are frustrated and how um, sixty percent of the the principals um, felt the government policies were having a detrimental effect on the the pupils uh, education and so their spirits are very low and it's one of the things that they're trying to work on obviously how tech will transform the traditional classroom there's a lot of talk about infusing technology in the classroom I think it's and Sir Ken said this today that technology is a tool 
if you use it effectively, it can enhance what happens in your classroom. The, uh, the social networking, the ability to make the world a smaller place by technology, by social networking, and is making a single consciousness, um, worldwide consciousness. Um, I don't know if I said that right, but it's, it's bringing all the people together in the world in order to speak about what's going on in their little area of the world and so less and less things can happen without the world knowing about them and this is a, it will become in a very exciting time in the future he did talk about uh, sir ken said two different things are going to affect education in the future one one of them is technology and social networking and the ability to uh, just to connect with other people around the world and the second one is population growth and you'll see that in the video uh, pros and cons of social media in the classroom is my last article. Uh, it w it's another good article. It talks about the, the pros of using social media. It talks about the cons of using social media and how they can be a distraction. Again, that's a good read. Check it out on Tato. And um, I notice I have uh, two viewers on here. And if any of you would like to ask a question or you have something that you would like me to talk about, feel free to, uh, to post a question because I am going to try and cut this off long before I hit the 15 minute mark as far as what I'm talking about because I don't think I want to spend more time than that on a Friday when I should be typing out my dissertation. <clears throat> Is there anyone there that has something you would like to add to the conversation or has a question? If not, I do appreciate you taking the time to come listen and for those of you that are listening to the recording, I hope that this, uh, this is informative to you and come by for the scheduled event which will happen on Monday and I think I've got a late one on Monday but I'm not too sure what time I post it. You'll have to take a look. It's the next Tato live event and it's worth coming by to listen to. <clears throat>